Okay, so um, I just call it the observer tool, but that just came out of being around Muji for uh, a long time. Um, so uh, the observer, or what you know, or what am I, or who am I? Uh, basically, I would say, like to um, get get a reading or an experience. Like everyone who's listening to this, get a reading experience of what am I or who am I right now. So what is your what is your experience in this moment? Now, some of the things. Do you experience uh, a limited sense of I in this moment? So is the I, is the sense of self limited? I.e., are you experiencing yourself as thoughts? Are you experiencing self? as body? Are you experiencing time? Are you experiencing sensations or feelings? Are these, are these experienced as a sense of self which is limited or personal? So get a reading. You know, you may, you know, someone may have a feeling of like, oh, I, I, I experience myself as fear in the, in the, as tension in the eyes. Or I, I may experience myself as a kind of a repressed feeling that won't come out, or I experience myself as fear around work, or, or there may be heart palpitations, or uh, being experienced. And if these exp if these are being experienced now, as as self, like this is definitely me. I am the heart palpitation. It's part of what I am, or I am or I'm experiencing myself in time, or I'm experiencing myself as stuck in this body, then that is the, that is the reading of the limited self, or the ego self, or the identified self. So whatever is the experience of the identified self, that is what we use to inquire into, is that my real self? So, so let's say I experience myself, as an example, let's say I experience myself as the limited body. I'm trapped in this, the limits of this body and the sensations in this body. Is that, but is that who I am? Because something is observing that. See, anything that is experienced, there must be something, anything that is experienced as a limit, there has to be that which is witnessing it, which is bigger than the limit. That which witnesses limits cannot be the limit. And many of you who've been to my group before will know what I'm going to do right now. The, the, the regulars will know what's going to come next. Like, this mug, this is a mug. But can I, am I, if you see a mug, are you the mug? Like, no, you're not the mug. You see the mug, but the mug has limits. Yeah, the mug has limits, but you're not the mug. You are the observer of the mug. You are that which observes the limits, this shape. This shape cannot be who you are, because the observing of the mug must be more uh, limitless than the mug. That which experience limits has to be bigger than the limits. Okay. So, but if, if, if the experience of self is the body, like I'm limited to this, Can I, am I the body or is there something here which is observing? Is there a witnesser or an observer, a deeper observer of the limits of this body which is not the body, which is here? So there is something here which is actually observing the limit of the body. And when you're, in, when you're the observer of the body, you realize that is more who you are. This lim identification of the limit is not you. It's the, but then that, suddenly you, your experience of self doesn't become confined to this, you're more limitless. Or, if there's palpitations going on in the heart area, you see, is there, some, is there something here which is witnessing, which is observing the palpitations, which is not the palpitations? What, you know, like, <clears throat> whenever something is identified with, and it has meaning, it, bec it starts to be experienced as if it's you. Like, if something is neutral, if something is meaningless, or has no relationship with it, or no projection onto it, then it's very, very clear to see it's not you. But if it becomes personal, or there's meaning, or there's a relationship from the ego, 
then it becomes confused as self because there's some kind of projected specialness or meaning. But you know, even if they're like, you know, like if, if someone says this is my heart and this is very important and there's a lot of attention and identification going to this area, but even if there's a lot of attention and identification going to this area, there's something here which is not interested in this area and which to this is meaningless and which is observing this, which is not this. You know, is there something here which is observing everything that's in this room but is nothing in this room? Is not a thing. Is there, is there a witnesser? You know, so are you the limited things? Are you, is, is one the cup? Or is there something that's witnessing all limits that, is, that are here, which is none of the limits? Yeah? And this is an experiential question. It's not really a question for the head. Because even if thoughts, you know, even if there were thoughts or if there were clouds or even if there's thoughts, is there something that's witnessing thoughts which is not interested in any of the thoughts? They're just not interested, you know. It's like they're, they're not anyone's thoughts. In fact, they're unimportant. And is there a witnesser, a bit of a question, is there a witnesser that's witnessing the, the witnesser? Is there a witnesser here that's witnessing, is there an interested witnesser here that's like interested in some of the objects in the room? And if there is, is there a witnesser witnessing that witnesser, which is, not, which is an uninterested witnesser of any of the things or objects in this room? And is that uninterested witnesser, is that limited in any way? If there's the experience of time, is there something here that is witnessing time, which is not interested in time? Is the, wit is the uninterested witnesser of time in time or not in time? You see? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So does time exist to the, to the witnesser of time which is not interested in time? In that place, does time exist? In that place, does the body exist as a limit? In that place, you know, in that place, is there a limit? And if there is a limit, what's the witnesser of that limit? You see, even if you're, if you're just take, going back to the witnesser of thoughts, the witnesser of palpitations, the witnesser of the body, the witnesser of time, if you do that and you're in that experience of the witnessing, is that witnessing experiencing any form of limit? Is the witnesser like this room? But if it's aware of this room, then there has to be a witnesser that is witnessing that which is filling this room. Yeah? So is that witnesser limited, you see? So is that which is witnessing without attachment or identification with any form of limit, is that, you know, is that being experienced now, you see? So that's just like a general thing. So whatever the experience, if there's any experience, palpitations, whatever, there is a witnesser of that. And if the witnesser of the palpitations is interested in, you know, oh yes, there is something witnessing these palpitations, but it seems to have a relationship with the palpitation. It seems to be like hooked in slightly. But then there has to be a witnesser that's witnessing that witnesser, mm. which is not, hasn't got like a, a witnesser that's like slightly interested. There's a witnesser that's not interested at all in palpitations or the heart area, mm. you see. So that's like the inquiry of what is the nature of self. Is the nature of self personal? Is it limited? Is it suffering? Is it a thought? So we're now going to do um, five minutes of either feel the feelings or the witnesser, or you can mix them, and uh, we'll do five, five to ten minutes or so, and uh, and then we'll see how we how we go with that. Okay, off we go.